Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm back with the Asus Tinkerboard running Android, and I wanna show you the easiest way to get emulators up and running on your Asus Tinkerboard. I'm running the latest version of Android from Asus's website. I think it's 0.4, I believe that's exactly what it is, but I did a video on installing Google Play. It crashes all the time, so it's very cumbersome. We're not even gonna need Google Play to get this up and running. What we're gonna do is install RetroX. Just head over to www.retrox.tv. It's free to use, but you can also get a paid version and it's $12.99. Now I got mine and I love it. One of the best parts about this, it does support cloud saves. So if I'm playing, let's say Tekken 3 on here and I get to the fourth character, gotta take a break, save it, turn it off, go to my Nvidia Shield out in the living room and resume right there. The other cool thing, all you need to do is add ROMs. It will scrape all of your artwork and metadata for you. It has the emulators already built in, so it's pretty much one of the best all-in-one emulator front ends for Android. I'm gonna start it up. I'm using a PS3 controller, but I have tested it with an 8-bitto and the Xbox One S controller. There are a few views that you can go through, but since the Asus Tinkerboard isn't Android TV, I chose the tablet version, and I actually love the animation here as you're going through. Six games per page, I mean, that's plenty for me, but if you want more, you can always go to settings, display settings, user interface, and turn it to TV mode. Now this is made for Android TV, like the Nvidia Shield. It's gonna close it for me, start it back up. Now I know a lot of people are gonna like this look a lot, but I'm telling you, if you use the tablet phone version on the Asus Tinkerboard, you're gonna have a much better day. I'm gonna switch back now. So this is all maintained and made by one developer. The main issue that I had last time I tried this out in one of my videos was the scraping of box art. That's one of his main priorities right now. He's trying to add everything. And as you can see, I have some PSP and some PlayStation 1 games that I'm gonna be testing. Pretty much everything scraped except for Spyro Year of the Dragon. And I think it was Crash Team Racing. But out of all of them, that's pretty good. I'm sure within the next month, everything's gonna be fixed, so we'll be able to scrape pretty much every game for every system that's offered in RetroX with no trouble at all. But for now, he's working on it. If we go up to this little icon in the top right-hand corner here, we can choose a single system to view the games. Now, these are all the systems that RetroX supports right now, and there are a ton of them. Performance is gonna really depend on the device you're using. So I'm on the Asus Tinkerboard. PSP works, but there's a lot of games that don't work well. Same with Dreamcast. I mean, you're gonna run into this. The best device to run this on is the Nvidia Shield TV. I'm gonna go with PlayStation first. I just wanna show you a little bit of gameplay here. I have a few games. First one, Bloody Roar 2. So I have a background two, effect going on, as you can see, a little bit of blurred. You can turn this off, it might annoy some people, but all of these games were pretty much made for 4.3 aspect ratios, and we're dealing with 16.9 screens nowadays. You will have black bars on the side if you don't enable this. Hopefully in the future he can implement some kind of pictures on the side, possibly. back out of here. You can save, load, quit. Just press start and select. We'll go with Spyro, Year of the Dragon. But first, I'm gonna turn that blur off like I told you guys. Settings. Display. Games and emulators. Order options. Just gonna disable it. We'll back up.
Now I already have a load ready to go. So PlayStation performs really good. I've tested a lot of games on it. A lot of games on PSP work great. On my Nvidia Shield, most of this stuff is fully playable, but since we're using the Asus Tinkerboard, it's really limited to the hardware. Hi Spyro. To look left or right, press the L2 or R2 buttons. To quickly center the camera behind you, press the L1 or R1 button. You Back out of this game show you a PSP game running so I'll just go to here and find my PSP directory Monster Hunter Freedom Unite or Freedom 2 so this is one of those games that runs really good on the tinkerboard So I forget what run was. I got a run button somewhere. So as you can see, Monster Hunter runs really good on the Tinkerboard. So you'll run into some games that don't perform well and you'll run into other games that perform really good on the Tinkerboard. But like I said, if you're gonna do emulation for Android, I definitely recommend a higher end device like the Nvidia Shield Android TV or even a newer Android phone. Now, I don't use Android for my everyday phone use. So I don't have a Galaxy S8 to test, but I'm sure the performance on it, it's gonna be amazing. Back out of here. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I kind of just wanted to show you the option you have if you're using the Asus Tinkerboard. The only thing you need to do is add your ROMs and it does everything for you. All the emulators are pre-installed. It'll download your BIOSes for you and it'll download your box art. So it's gonna be hit or miss on the games that are playable on the Tinkerboard, but I'm sure there's thousands and thousands of games that will be fully playable. Like I said, everything within PlayStation 1 worked great. SNES, NES, Atari, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Gear, Genesis, all of that's gonna play flawlessly. But when you move up to PSP, Dreamcast, you will run into some games that won't run well at all. Midnight Club 3 is horrible on this board. God of War Chains of Olympus, another one. Arctic Storm or Arctic Edge, I forget. Motor Storm, Arctic Edge is another one of those that is just really bad performance on pretty much any device. If you're interested in picking Retro X up, links in the description. I definitely recommend at least trying it. And like I said, it is worth $12.99. It does everything for you. All you need to do is add your ROMs. Like always, thanks for watching.